Angel Grove, California. Tommy Oliver and Kimberly Hart stand in line in their black gowns and hats waiting for their names to be called. This is it. They are finally graduating. Kimberly and Hart. Here we go. Kimberly walks the stage. She shakes hands with Principal Kaplan and takes her diploma. Thomas James Oliver. Tommy smiles as he walks the stage. Better late than never. At least this time, he was proud of the grades he achieved. Do you hear that? What? The clapping. Nowhere near as loud as everyone else's. Well, you did do this before, and they'd think that was a clone, so... Yeah. I just hope I can leave those rumors behind. Get a fresh start at college. Yeah, not likely. You're going to Angel Grove University, remember? Right. And everyone else now. Aisha texted me this morning. She got in. Everyone is coming to Angel Grove U. Awesome. Once the ceremony finishes, the students unite with their families. Well done, you two. Tommy and Kimberly look up at the hearts, and David walks over to them. Kimberly hugs her mom and dad as Tommy walks up to his older brother. Deja vu. At least you got to be here the first time. Yeah, for the clone. Jesus, I wish we came up with something better. If you want to go back to being legally dead, you go right ahead, bro. Tommy, well done. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Hart. (laughs) Please, call me Jonathan. Okay, everyone together for a picture now. Even you, Jonathan, and you, David. In the neighboring city of Stone Canyon, the trio of Thunder Rangers have also graduated. Wow. College, here we come. We are making the right choice, right? Choosing our college based on our other job? We have teleporters, babe. We aren't going to Angel Grove U because we are Power Rangers. We're going to be with our friends. Who are Power Rangers? Yeah, well, Adam, put that phone away for five minutes. You've been on that thing all morning. Oh, uh, sorry. Kat's hearing is today. Chad said he'd let me know what happens. I hope they throw her ass in jail and lose the key. Aisha! Come on, she wasn't herself. She was forced to spy on us for her family's sake, and then the shadow coin corrupted her. She isn't to blame for what happened. Tell that to the families of everyone who is in that crater. I can still see smoking from here. Hey, my mom and dad are over there with yours, babe. Let's go say hi, huh? (sighs) Lead the way. Meanwhile, the East Coast schools graduated a few days earlier. Trini Kwan now stands at a lakeside. This is the place where her father's ashes were scattered all those years ago. Hey, Dad. So, I graduated, heading off to college in a couple of months. Got in out in California. Can you believe it? After everything that has happened this last year, I didn't think I'd even be alive, never mind to have time to study. But Zordon says our non-ranger lives are also important. And he's right. Hopefully, one day we won't have to be Power Rangers anymore. I think that day will be soon, actually. The monster attacks aren't what they used to be, and honestly, I don't think we need 10 Power Rangers. Jason wants to go, and maybe, maybe I should join him. I don't know. We'll see. Trini says her goodbyes, and is picked up by Jason, who has been waiting for her in his car. You okay? Yeah, it's strange. I never knew him, but... Since I told you about him, I've come here every couple of months. Because I just want to be able to tell one of my folks the truth. Yeah. Uh, well, Zack is probably already at the pizza place. We better get going before he makes Alpha teleport us there or something. Ready? <laughs> yeah, let's go. The large fleet of Zidorian vessels fly at faster than light speed. At the center of the fleet is the new command ship, the Emperor's Wrath. Zed sits on his stone throne on the bridge, looking out at the purple tones of the light speed subspace. We will enter the target solar system in 3.4 hours shipboard time, my lord. Very good. Stay on course. The aft doors of the bridge open. A being enters through it. He like most of the others aboard, appears almost human. His armor, however, is what makes him stand out. He is dressed head to toe in earth-toned camouflage, 
over a bone-white base paint. The skull mask over his face completes the somewhat skeletal appearance. He wants to see you. I am due to have my tubes changed in an hour. He can see me then, in the medical bay. No, Ed. Now. <sighs> Zed lets out a low growl. The fool knows his name. He has long since stopped trying to correct it. He does it to mock him. Because he can. I am not some minion to be summoned, boy. I may owe him a great deal, but I am still emperor here. You owe my father everything, Emperor. Without him, it would be your head on Mondo's wall. His chambers, now. Zed growls again, but stands, walking with haste towards the exit. Call me if anything changes. Understood, my lord. Lord Zed takes the elevator to the 31st deck, heading directly for his honored guest's room. It looks more like an audience chamber than a stateroom, barely lit and covered in a thin layer of smoke, just as Zed had ordered the environmental systems to be programmed in here. The skeleton armored messenger is already there, smiling smugly. What is it, Vilius? In the darkness stands a large being in a cloak, his skin as black as the void beyond, his head almost a T-shape, with reading glasses perched on his nose. Zed did not recall what species he was, but obviously it was not the same as his supposed children. They were both of the human-like race that made up most of the ruling class in Zed's empire. You may go, Rito. But I wanted to stay and- Now. Rito nods and walks out of the room. I apologize for my offspring, Emperor. He is a wild sort. I had thought fighting in the war would season him a little. Calm his rebellious nature. Yes, well, that failed. And yet he was one of your best generals after I ordered him into your service. His victory against Gasket turned the tide, as I recall. And yet Gasket escaped, the only member of the royal house not in my collection on the bridge. He'll turn up. But you insisted on turning your focus to attacking these primitives instead. They have some of the most powerful weapons in the galaxy. We will need them to be sure the machines can never rise again. Or anyone else who dares to rise against me. Indeed. And yet the Zeo crystal that powered your last flagship sits in storage below. Why not use it to create even greater weapons? Why waste your time on these lesser creatures? Because they destroyed Serpentera and escaped my wrath. Lord Zed does not leave planets free once I have claimed them for the Empire. I see. They beat you, and you need to prove it was a fluke. It is about ego. It is about unfinished business, including checking up on the task force I left behind. And my daughter. Do not forget about her. Or the deal we made. I will uphold it. If Rita Bandora is still alive, I will give her amnesty. And? Reinstatement. The same for her entire former command staff. Good. That is why I asked for you here. I know we will be at Earth soon. I needed to be sure you wouldn't start with an all-out bombardment. The thought had crossed my mind. I was patient with this planet the first time, but no more. These people need to know who rules them. I need to have them begging. And it is that style that cost you the planet the first time. What? Even now, you fail to see the real problem. These rangers. As long as they are around, this world can never fully be controlled. Last time, I brought a handful of vessels. Now I have an entire fleet. Even the rangers will be overwhelmed this time. Perhaps. But if not, you might want to think of a plan B, yes? And what would that be? Rita, my dear Emperor. My daughter is your plan B. Earth, the command center. Field recalibration complete. The stealth systems are now operating with 98.5% efficiency. Well done, Alpha. Now, let's us... Wait! 
I am picking up a large fleet of vessels entering the solar system. Confirmed. I cannot identify a third of them, but the rest are Zidorian. Contact the rangers at once. Within the hour. Really? We just broke for the summer. I'm afraid there is no doubt. Lord Zed has returned. How many ships? 48, including a massive command vessel of a type I have never seen before. It appears to have started life as a vessel in the other fleet, but it has been heavily modified with Zedorian and Machine Empire technology, a symbol of the forces now under his command, no doubt. That means he won the war then. Unfortunately, it would appear so. Well, Dave, I'm glad you came. We could use all the help we can get. 48 spaceships? What good are any of our Zords going to be against that? Fortunately, we have spent the last few months preparing for this eventuality. We knew the day would come when Zed would return, so we had to bolster our arsenal as much as we could. How so? We have rebuilt the Zords. What Zords? Yours. The original Zords. Alpha and I had the original Zord scan saved on our database. After they were destroyed, we attempted to reverse engineer the technology. It took us many months, but we have duplicated them. They are remade as they once were. We have also programmed the Pegasus and Phoenix Swords to operate remotely once they have been called. They cannot operate alone, but they will activate the combination sequence when commanded. I... I, I can't believe it! We might actually have a chance to get Zed now! The threat from Zed is still very much real. And even with two Megazords, our chances are still dire. But better! Yes! The Mastodon is back! I can't wait! These swords aren't 100% identical to the original Zack. Those contained animal DNA. These ones are purely mechanical with an animal-like appearance. However, Functionally, they are similar, and will merge in the same way your originals did, with the Dragonzord and Titanus. Titanus? Yes. I contacted Titanus for this fight. It will join you in orbit once the other swords come together. The old Zords would help us take down Serpentera. Titanus alone will be a big help. Thanks, Zordon. Well then, I guess this is it. How long do we have? The fleet will reach Earth within the hour. Okay. This is going to be bad, guys. Bigger than anything we've ever done. If the last few months have shown us anything, it's that we have our whole lives ahead of us. If anyone doesn't want to come, speak up now. No one will judge you for it. And pass up the chance to ride the Tyrannosaurus into battle one last time? No way, man. This is what we've been fighting for. Everything else was a warm-up. This is it. Let's do it! All right then, Jason. You want to do the honors? Nah, man. I may lead our side, but you're the White Ranger. The leader of both teams, like I told you months ago. Do it. Thanks, man. Well then... It's Morphin' Time! White Tiger Thunder Power! Dragon Thunder Power! Lion Thunder Power! Griffin Thunder Power! Great Dragon! Mastodon! Pterodactyl! Triceratops! Sabertooth Tiger! Tyrannosaurus! We need dinosaur power now! I call on the power of thunder! Thunderzord's power up! Mastodon, Lion, Thunderzord power! Pterodactyl, Phoenix, Thunderzord power! Triceratops, Pegasus, Thunderzord power! Sabertooth, Tiger, Griffin, Thunderzord power! Tyrannosaurus, Red Dragon, Thunderzord power! Dragon Sword! White Tiger Thunder Sword Power! Now! We call on the power of Titanus! One by one, all the Zords gather into a fleet above Earth's orbit. 
Oh my god, it's actually Kittysaurus. I can't believe it. They're good as new. Master Dunn, I missed you, man. Okay, Rangers, power up your crystals. Let's bring them together. Three, two, one. and Pegasus are responding to the command. Let's do it. Thunder Megazord sequence activated. The two Megazords form, both call on their respective swords and fly up with their rockets to rest in orbit next to each other. Beside them, the Dragon Sword, the Tiger Warrior, and Titanus join the flank. Okay, Zed. Bring it on. From his bridge, Zed sneers as he observes the sight of the Zords gathering for battle. Didn't I destroy those ones? And where are the Shadow Rangers? <sighs> it is a little consequence. This time, I'll make sure there is nothing left to repair. ETA, three minutes and counting. Beside Zed's throne, Rito stands. This doesn't change our deal, Ed. I know our deal. And unless you remain silent and call me by my title, you'll be taking your sister's place. Of course, your greatness, Highness Emperor. <sighs> if I didn't need your father... But you do. Open the channel to the Ranger weapons. Channel open, my lord. This is Lord Zed. I am impressed. You have not only recovered from my last attack, but resurrected everything you lost. A shame. It was all for nothing. You will all die this day. Did you call us up just to make idle threats, Zed? No. I have a proposal. If you abide by my terms, then your planet will be left unharmed and free. What terms? First, you will transport to my ship Goldar of Gryphazor, Finster of Plepperchown, and, if she lives, Rita Bandora. Second, you will hand over all your power coins. Third, your planet Earth will surrender to the might of my empire. Do all these, and I won't burn any more of your cities. How do we know you won't just do it anyway, Zed? This isn't a discussion, Red Ranger. You, of all people, should know the penalty for not listening to me. You have one hour. What are we going to do? Jason, it's up to you. You have more of a reason to hate Zed than anyone. Whatever you say, we'll follow. Rita was arrested last year. She's been in our state's prison ever since. It took a long time to capture her. I sure as hell ain't giving her up to this red-skinned abomination. Damn right. We're not handing anyone or anything over to him. And we're not surrendering. We are the Power Rangers. And we defend Earth no matter what the cost. They don't seem to be moving, my lord. Very well. It appears they've made their choice. We don't need the whole hour. Tell all ships to begin orbital bombardment. Sir, I'm getting a message from the surface. I believe it's General Goldar. Hmm. Make contact, and then teleport him aboard at once. It isn't long before the human forms of Goldar and Finster walk onto the command deck. <laughs> well, don't you both look adorable. You made us alter ourselves into these forms, sir. That I did. Now, the Shadow Ranger mission. Report. Bandora, my lord. She was behind it all. This little mutt was her spy the entire time. He manipulated you into doing her will. And then she took control and... What happened? She failed. Again. We had the entirety of both Ranger teams captured. We could have killed them any time we wanted. 
But Bandora was too focused on increasing her own power and status. She hesitated too long, and their White Ranger... Did you kill her for treason and take control? No. And why not? Bandora was... Goldar stops. He notices the being next to Zed. She was what, Goldar? She was in deep with the native population. Threatened to expose us all if we didn't follow her command again. Zed just shoots a look of disdain at Rito. Perhaps you could relay this information to your dear father and see if he's still... I just did. He says it changes nothing. Is that... Rito Bandora? What is he doing here, my lord? Let's just say I had to make a few concessions to win the war with Mondo. But as you can see... He motions to the wall of severed robot heads. It was worth the price. Now, Goldar, where are my shadow coins? They... uh... Goldar? The Power Rangers have them. What? I left you with one simple task and more than the means to do it. And not only did you fail, but you gave away those means to the enemy. Is that correct? I'm afraid so. It was all Pandora's- Enough excuses, you pathetic worm! You have done one thing right since your demotion, and as you know, that one thing has been undone. And you have more than outlived your usefulness, both of you. Zed aims his staff. Oh dear. My lord, please, no. Stop! Remember the deal. The full terms of the deal. What possible use could Master Vilius have for these fools? He has his reasons. Now stand down or lose everything we gave you, starting with this ship. Uh, fine. They will live for now. My lord, if you will allow us, we can make it up to you. How? You want Rita Bandora? We know where she is. Zed says nothing, just slowly turns to look back to him. Rita Bandora sits in her cell, playing with her invisible ring. She could have escaped months ago, of course, but she knew she was the safest here. At least she thought she was. Oh no. Rita finds herself immediately transported from the comfort of her prison cell to the starship she has dreaded. Below her stands Goldar and Finster. You told Zed where I was? I thought we would all have a better chance if we confronted him face to face. So Zed is finally here. Not just Zed, daughter of mine. Rita snaps her head to see Master Vilius emerge from the shadows. Father! Hello, Rita. You look terrible. She rushes down and hugs him. He returns it. What? What are you doing here? Lord Zed required more money and manpower than he had to defeat the machines. I provided that. The price was your freedom. Yours and your crew. He gestures to the two behind her. She sneers at Goldar. You could have made one exception. Don't be so harsh on him, my dear. He gave us your coordinates to save you. Now there is much to do. Perhaps you should clean yourself up for your return to active duty, hmm? In what role? You will be an advisor to the Emperor, and report directly to me. Well, that changes things. With a quick spell, Rita brings her ring back onto her hand, and then uses its power to summon her staff. It glows as it appears in her hand. She transforms back into her true form with the black uniform and horns. Better? Much. You have mastered your mother's power. You recharged her staff. Yes, being a simple commander wasn't working anymore. I approve. I married your mother for a reason. The House of Bandora brought more than martial might. The females of the family were the most powerful sorceresses in the galaxy. And now, you carry on that tradition. I thought you'd forgotten me when you didn't use your influence to stop my demotion and banishment on that garbage scow. You need a chance to prove yourself, my child. Now you have, and you have the power of your maternal side. And yet I still failed. 
Today you get to make up for that. Come. I'll join you in a moment, Father. I just need to speak to my crew alone for a moment. Very well. Join us on the bridge when you're ready. Bandora turns to Goldar. She aims her staff to fire at him. Bandora, don't! I didn't have a choice. Calm yourself, Goldar. You were a faithful servant on Earth. You led me back to this position of power. You deserve to be rewarded, both of you. In a flash, Rita's magic overtakes Goldar and Finster in a haze of purple light. When the shimmer fades, both creatures are once again their alien selves. Goldar even has his natural wings again. A promise is a promise, Goldar. Welcome back. Goldar is silent for a second, then pounds his chest and bows his head. My thanks, Commander. But one thing I don't understand. All of this is much different from what the Prophet told you. Yes, it appears my actions still altered the timeline, albeit differently than what I expected. What do you think happened? My guess? The wound that Zed sustained during his battle with the Green Power Ranger made him unable to fight the Machine Empire on his own. In this new timeline, he had to rely on my father's help. <laughs> Thus, we are no longer destined to be Zed's slaves. We are now his equals. And how long will that last? We shall see. Perhaps this different road will still lead to the same destination, I'm not sure. I am afraid we are responsible for our own destinies now. Rita smirks and spins on her heels, walking to the door. She is soon on the bridge with Zed. Her and Goldar bow before the Emperor. Rise. Thank you, my lord. As always, I live to serve you. I thank you for a second chance to do so. You will not regret it. We shall see. Sis, welcome back! Rito, your armor is still absurd, you petulant swine. <laughs> Love you too, sis. Enough to your posts. Now that you're all aboard, I have no need to keep up this charade. Send a message to all ships. Attack! Fighters incoming! coming! The shots find their targets. The Zord's armor holds until the rangers perform evasives to avoid the following volleys. Everyone pick your targets. Take them out one at a time. Then we go for the head of the snake. The Thunder Megazord backs up as a swarm of fighters overtake it. Aisha activates the weapons. The eyes of the Thunder Zord glow yellow and fire. Two explode, then a third. Adam fires the Green Dome's chest piece, unleashing a green laser that blasts through several more ships. Besides them, the original Megazord fires its own Eye and Crown lasers, then swings down its charged power sword. As the Megazord focuses on destroying the smaller crafts, it is hit in the back by the destroyer Chimera. The Megazord's yellow eyes flicker as it begins to get caught in the Earth's gravity well. We're falling! Training! I need those thrusters back online! Don't you think I'm trying? The Megazord begins to burn up in Earth's atmosphere when the Tiger Zord swoops down and pulls it back to space. Power's back online. We're stabilizing on thrusters again. Thanks, Tommy. No worries. Figure it's the least I can do after. Heads up! He is cut off as the two Zords are engaged again by fighters. Next to this, the Dragon Zord takes aim with its missiles. Open wide, assholes. It aims directly at the Chimera. This is for Kaku. They fire. They hit. David reloads and fires again. This is for Dulcia. And this? Well, this is for me. In one last huge impact, the Chimera is destroyed. Ooh, Ed, wasn't that your last command ship? Keep firing. Destroy those machines. Titanus now gets into position, bringing out his main cannons at either side and opening fire. 
Its blasts destroy two more of the capital ships, but is blasted in return by the Emperor's wrath. The massive carrier cries as one of its cannons gets blown off. Titanus is hit! Take us in on Zed's ship! Full speed! Jace? Just do it! The Megazord's rockets fire. It blasts at full speed towards the Emperor's Wrath, then slashes the sword into its shield. Shields down! Here we go again. Same sword too, huh? All nearby ships, focus fire on that red one. Now! I can't! There's too many! Shields failing! Oh god. The original is almost taken down when the Dragon Sword swoops in, using its own body to deflect the blasts. I'll cover you. Go! David! Just do it! Now! They have no choice but to comply and pull back. Damn it! Okay, that was stupid. David, meanwhile, spins the Dragon Zord's drill tail and drives it through another ship. But in doing so, takes several more devastating blows. Shields are down. Defense is failing. I got you, bro. The Tiger Warrior swoops in and blasts at the fleet with its chest-mounted fireballs. Okay, pull him back. The Tiger Warrior retreats, but not before taking several hard hits. We'll keep them busy while you guys recharge! The Thunder Megazord now flies in. It charges and slashes its Thunder Saber down into three more ships, one after the other. Being sleeker than the others, it is able to avoid many more blasts, but still takes a couple of good hits, straight to the face and chest. The green chest plate cracks. Ah! Armor's down to 45%. Okay, pull us back! Ay, 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 ay! The swords are being pounded, Gordon! They won't hold out much longer! Prepare the emergency teleporter, Alpha, just in case. Rangers, this is Gordon. Bring the original swords together with Titanus as the Ultra Zord. That should consolidate your defenses. And give them one target? Besides, Titanus lost one of its main guns. The armor and firepower will still be far more than what you currently have. The Thunderzords can cover you. Uh, okay, David, everyone, activate the Ultrasword mode! The Ultra Zord comes online, sands one cannon. Jason is able to use the mount as a base to fly in spinning motions to avoid many blasts. The Thunder Megazord and Tiger Warrior flank the fleet and pick off as many ships as they can along the way. Zordon, are you picking this up also? I am. I am detecting a large armature platform from the island of Hawaii. Nuclear radiation detected. But they don't have the range to attack targets in space! It would appear our human friends have been learning from Serpentera's remains, after all. We need to warn them! Indeed. Rangers, all back from the fleet. Your people are about to launch nuclear missiles at them. Space nukes? Since when do they have that? They have had a long time to study Serpentera's act. Let us hope they are targeting the right people. As if on cue, the missiles fire outward toward the spacecrafts. Everyone fall back! The Zords move away as the missiles pass between them and hit their target, Zed's capital ships. Okay, that's our opening! All weapons, fire! The Ultra Zord fires. Its many blasts hit and destroy a few more ships. Recharging. On it! Tommy moves ahead and fires his chest blast. Two more ships go down in flames. They recharge to full power. Yes, our turn! The Thunder Megazord moves in and slashes into a capital ship, slicing it in two. 
switch modes. Right. The Thunder Megazord splits apart. Its various armor pieces form around the Tiger Sword to become the Mega Tiger Sword. Rocky, meanwhile, blasts his feet rockets and flies in. The Red Dragon Warrior spins its black staff like a helicopter and flies directly through a villious frigate. Online! Fire! The Mega Tiger Zord, meanwhile, aims its gauntlet arm and sends the Phoenix blasting into another destroyer. Another volley of missiles come from Earth and destroys four more ships. The orbit of Earth is now littered with the debris of destroyed ships, though there are still a few active ones remaining. Might be time for Plan B, Ed. <sighs> Order two of the remaining ships to Earth. Destroy that missile launcher. Everyone else, focus fire on the largest range of construct. Destroy the carrier, no matter the cost. Two of the ships do indeed pull off and fly towards Earth. I'll get after them. Hey, good luck, Rock. Rocky's Red Warrior transforms back into its dragon mode and chases after the two ships. Meanwhile, the remaining ships in space all fire at one target, the Ultra Zord. Titanus is telling us to eject. No! Not again! You can't run! It's not running. It says we need to save ourselves. Damn it. Disengage Ultra Zord! The Mega Dragon Zord does as it's told and disengages from its mount. And as the gold chain falls from its hands, Titanus lets out one last cry. It says goodbye. And in a blinding light, Titanus is destroyed. Its long neck falls away from its body as its red eyes fade to black. No! Damn it! We need to come apart. We're too much of a target as one. <sighs> okay. Stay alive. No promises. In a split second, the Dragon Zord falls off of the original Megazord and reforms into itself. What's our plan, Jason? What I just told David. Stay alive. Rocky has flown the Red Dragon to less than 6,000 feet before he was able to catch up to the two ships. He aims at them with the Zord's fire breath. It's not even going through their shields! He knew he was the only chance of stopping these two. The ship's now far too low for the military to risk firing on them. The nuclear fallout would be catastrophic. Rocky looks on as the two vessels begin to slow, obviously setting up for a bombardment. Okay, time to get creative. He quickly transforms the Red Dragon into its warrior mode, but doesn't activate the feet jets. Instead, he summons the staff and spins the right wrist to use it as a helicopter blade to slow his descent, or at least angle it. And I hope this works. From the viewport, he sees the ships getting closer and closer. Eventually, he stops the staff spinning and allows his Zord to free fall onto a vessel. It lands exactly as he wants it. The Red Warrior now straddling the ship. Thank God you don't have Mega Balls, man! But by the time he has done this, the second ship has already taken aim and fires. The missile platform and the entire base around it is destroyed in a fiery explosion. We'll pay for that, you sons of bitches! The Red Warrior raises the staff up and plunges it down into the ship's hull. The shields give way almost as quickly as the metal. Ride him, cowboy! The staff almost operates as a joystick as the ship is forced to steer and crash into the other. Ah! Rocky leaps his Zord off just in time as the two ships collide and explode. Mission accomplished. I'm on my way back up. In orbit, things are not faring well. 
The original Megazord is almost out of power. Its body looks like a block of Swiss cheese with many of its pieces missing. The Mega Tigerzord is also not looking too great, but it still fires away and takes down another vessel. You can do this! Only a few left! Yeah, but Zed's big one is barely scratched. Let's change that, shall we? I'm with you. The Mega Tigerzord and Dragonzord fire a full volley at the flagship. On board. Shields down to 12% and falling. Pandora, take a battalion and get down to the teleporter bay. I will join you soon. What? Do as I say. For the Empire. For the Empire. Goldar follows her with his eyes as she leaves the bridge and then looks back to Zed as he stands from his throne. All batteries fire on the Great Dragon. Full power! Defense is failing! Get him out of there, Alpha! In his cockpit, David shimmers away in green light. Seconds later, the Dragonzord lets out one last cry and then explodes. No! Damn it! Uh, Zordon! Do you have him? David is safe. Rangers, we must withdraw. Your swords cannot handle another attack. No! We fight until the last possible second, no matter what the cost! Right. Form up! The two remaining battered and charred Megazords line up and fire everything they have. The two ships flanking Zed's flagship are hit. One is destroyed. The other takes another volley and follows. There's only one left other than Zed's, and it's too far back behind the debris. All right! Focus fire on the command! A blast shuts off the last of the Megazord's power and forces it to tumble backward. All systems are down! We're spinning out of control! Zordon, get us out of here! Zordon! Radio's dead. We have to use our wrist comms. But before Zack can finish the sentence, the Megazord hits the atmosphere and begins to burn up once more. Tommy and the others are not able to save them this time, as the Mega Tiger Zord is currently losing its battle with the Emperor's Wrath. We can't match their firepower. We need to fire the feed. Ah! Below, the original Megazord continues to fall. It's so hot, I can feel it even in my suit. All of them try to raise their wrists, press their communicators, but their limbs are pinned down by the G-forces, unable to move. Jason does all he can to turn his head so he can look at Trini. Trini, I... Yeah, me too. They reach out and are just able to grab each other's hands. <laughs> the group call out as they suddenly stop, caught by the Red Warrior. Alpha, OG Megazord is down! Get them out of there! Teleporting now! The larger combined Megazord is too heavy. The Red Dragon strains as it tries to keep hold as long as it can. Ah! Alpha? We have them! Oh. Rocky finally lets go. The Megazord falls from the Dragon Warrior's grip and plummets down into the atmosphere. Moments later, it is little more than a fireball plummeting to Earth. I tried to aim for an ocean. But if you can, teleport the pieces. I would. But without us having an active beacon to look onto them, we can't- Alpha, just do your best. Rocky looks up and watches as the Mega Tiger Zord is now latched onto the top of the flagship, pounding into it with its fists with little success. Guys, the other Zords are gone. We have to pull back. If we do, then there's nothing to stop Zed from attacking Earth. Hey, does this thing have a self-destruct? What? You're joking. Tell me you're joking. Yeah, there we go. I'm putting the main reactor into shutdown. Adam, grip on as tight as you can. Don't let go. Rocky, you make sure that other ship doesn't reach Earth, you hear? On it! Warning, reactor coolant system is offline. Core explosion in 20 seconds. Okay, let's go. No, not yet. We have to stay on as long as possible. Make sure Zed doesn't buck us off. Oh, God. This is not what I pictured when I woke up this morning. The Red Warrior now flies past and engages the remaining ship. 
it opens fire. Rocky moves in and swipes at it with a staff. Sending it flying, Rocky charges in for a second hit. Batter up! He yells as he bats at it again. The vessel is thrown away. The lights on it dim into darkness as it lists out of sight. Yeah, home run! Meanwhile, five, four, three, Tommy! Two. Now, Alpha! The Mega Tiger Zord explodes. The explosion sends a massive shockwave for hundreds of kilometers. It even hits the Red Warrior. Shit! I'm losing power! Alpha, get me out of here! As soon as Rocky teleports away, the Red Dragon loses power and drifts in space among the other debris. Earth's orbit now looks like a starship in Zord Graveyard. The Rangers now stand in the command center. On the screens, they see the Emperor's wrath still intact. What? No! We just sacrificed all of the Thunder Swords and that ship is still in one piece! Barely, Adam. My readings indicate the vessel has lost all but emergency power. Their primary engines are damaged beyond repair. The operators are currently attempting to crash land on the moon. The other vessel Rocky faced is in better shape, but it is also currently dead in space. Then it was worth it. We lost the Zords, but we stopped them. We stopped Zed. The Red Dragon was damaged by the shockwave, but if we can get to it, we might be able to bring it back online. Maybe it can help revive the others. What's left of them? Meanwhile, The Emperor's Wrath manages to take advantage of the low gravity and lack of atmosphere to successfully navigate and crash onto the surface of the moon. The vessel now sits almost lifeless, wedged into Luna. Aboard, the bridge is dark, but for red emergency lights. <sighs> Report! We have no power, sir. Everything but gravity and life support is down. Did Pandora successfully teleport in time? Unknown. She made it. My father will have made sure of that. <sighs> All our losses, and yet still you live. Just lucky, I guess. The command center. Rangers, Rita Bandora is free. She is attacking New York City with a legion of warriors. I have a visual. The group look at the screens. They see Rita glow purple all over her body. Her staff pulses into her. Whoa, she got her staff back. And it looks like she's been supercharged somehow. We have to stop her. Tommy now looks at David. David nods. Payback time. Back to action. The warriors move in. They shoot without mercy into the civilian crowds. In the middle is Rita Bandora, who appears to float, godlike as she pulses with power. Keep firing. They'll be here. Bandora! Rita smirks as she turns her head to see the ten rangers. <laughs> About time. Move in! The rangers charge forward. Some call on their weapons. Others go hand to hand as they fight Rita's troops. They are here, Emperor. In a flash of light, Lord Zed appears beside her. Hold up your staff. She raises her staff high, Zed doing the same. Their staffs cross in an X. I add my power to yours. Use it. End this. Zed's staff glows as it pulses lightning into Rita's. As her staff glows, so do her eyes. Dornath Nazrak, Danoko Dora, spirits of the ancient, give me your power. Deto Korandono. What's she doing? Oh, you feel that? I feel oh, weak. Stop her! Use your blasters! The Rangers call on their blasters, but before they can fire, Bandora falls to the earth. Jerokoram, your power is mine. She slams her staff into the pavement, cracking it. A shockwave of purple power blasts from her staff and travels outward towards the rangers. Zordon, get us out of here! Too late! 
the Rangers are washed over by the shock wave. Their morphers spark, and a second later, their armor fades away, leaving only the teens beneath. Our powers! They... Oh no. Tommy looks down at his morpher. His power coin is cracked, dark, just like David's back at the base last year. Everyone, we need to get out of here. Use your communicators. But she's still... It's over, Dave. One by one, the group bring up their wrist communicators and press the return teleport command. Adam and David are the last. Ah! Adam calls out as a Zadorian warrior slices into his back. Adam falls. Adam! David calls out and then glares over at Rita as each of their ranger colors pulse into her. <laughs> yes! Yes! Adam and David, I am logging onto you! Teleporting you out now! This isn't over, witch! In the command center, many of the group rush to Adam on the floor of the teleporter room. Adam! Adam, can you hear me? He took a hit to the back. I will get him to medical bay at once. I'm coming with you. Me too. Alpha picks up Adam and hurries him from the room to the medical bay. Aisha and Rocky follow. The rest regroup in the main chamber, many with tears as they watch the screen. Zed is gone from the scene. His part is done. Bandor, however, is still there. She pulses with power. Their power. Our power coins, they're dead! What happened? She drained them like she did David's. Zed made her powerful enough to do all of them at once. It's over. But we can fix them, right? I'm afraid that is beyond our power, as it was with the Pegasus coin. And Saba is gone. This is it, guys. The Power Rangers are finished. Meanwhile, in the future of another world, another universe, a man sits on his throne, watching this all play out on projected images before him. The timeline has almost corrected itself, my lord. It appears your plan has failed. Silence or lose your head! I only failed because of that time agent. And because of them. The man in the white, gold, and green ranger armor points at the original six rangers on the screen. Giving Bandora knowledge of what is to come wasn't enough. I see now that that version of me isn't strong enough to be what I am. No matter how much I've pushed him. Prepare our forces. If Tommy Oliver won't step into my shoes for that universe, then I will just have to pay them a visit myself. <laughs> <laughs>